Hey, it's Joe Lyons from The Automator, and this video you're about to watch, we were on a call, Irfan and I were working with Scott, a hero member, to automate phone link for another client, because interesting enough, Push Bullet couldn't be accessed. It was really kind of weird. But uh, in this video, we were having some troubles, and so Isaiah's popped in for a different reason, and we said, hey, can you help us see if there's any other way that you might automate phone link? And he went down this very, very interesting path. Now, we didn't solve anything here, but I think you'll enjoy watching this video to learn about it. It'll be now our 20th way to automate programs that we know how to automate programs with AutoHotKey. It's a whole new way to connect to apps using this Windows runtime uh, created by Lexicos, of course. So hope you enjoy the video. Please like the video if you learned something, it really helps us out. If you wanna learn more about these kind of things, actually this Friday, we're covering the Windows runtime and a little bit more in depth in the Hero Call, but it's those kind of things we talk about and we answer people's questions in those Hero Calls um, or, of course, check out our courses. They come with a 200% money-back guarantee. Okay, th enjoy. Thank you. So mm -hmm. you can, now you can see. Mm -hmm. this, so this yep. pen has a different name, but this pen is not the pen that we were having in there. No, you're, that's, not the, that's not the same, right? Yeah. It's not. So, so when, when I go here, okay, mm -hmm. so when I do a highlight, yep. so... Here it is referring to a path, but yeah. this path get never resolved because we are starting. You're in the wrong. Windows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You are in the wrong. In the wrong. Because look, that's that executable that you're looking for. Look at the name of the executable. It's the phone experience host. So that's a host. It's a host exe that launches a secondary exe that is a child of, of itself of, of this thing. So you're looking at the phone thing through a different thing. I don't know how to explain it. Wait, through wait, a different wait, wait, frame kind of thing. It, it's... Right, exactly. Yeah, okay. It's definitely what it is. So basically, you're what you're looking at right here is inside another thing. That's what's going on. Now, now can you can you um, remove the code and add the element now? Does it still say phone experience host? Uh, remove stuff yeah, just remove code. remove the whole code. Remove everything. Okay. Just remove everything. Yeah. Now hit highlight. Yeah, it still gives you the phone experience host, but yeah. that's the problem. Oh, you're, you're never place. gonna find that. You're not gonna find that path, right? But yeah. we could we can swap that out possibly and connect to the iframe and set, like to the actual okay real real thing, right? Is what you're saying? Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not. It's quite either. Yeah, it is conceivable, right? I, I get your point. Yeah, I'm, I understand. Right. Go to the task manager. Let's see how it shows in the task manager. So look for phone link. So there's the phone experience. Put put the word phone. So you see none of those. Oh, that's the one. So you see that's one. But look at the other one down there that says runtime broker. That's the one that actually connects the phone with the other part of the Windows API. It's a weird thing. It's not a it's not a normal executable because this is an app. This is not a normal executable, by the way. So this is a this is a phone link app. And actually if you look at that executable, it is pointing to a different thing as well. So because that is kind of like a container for the program, not the program itself. Okay. So yeah. the the way I get it is I use WinGet. Win get. Uh -huh. of a client right and then i put it in here then i get the parent right. element and from there i can have everything so because because my dump all worked then <laughs> um hold on let me let me uh exactly element from point yes you can get the element below the mouse position right yeah so yeah, what i get sounds, that's that's the the easiest that you can do right now uh -huh. um the other one, I just, right, right now, I was thinking about something that I was going to tell you, that it is not UIA, is, okay, so it's the, not the com object, but the runtime, but I don't know, you don't have much experience on that, but you remember that WinRT, go to Lex, go to GitHub, go to GitHub and look for Lexicos. Oh, I was in GitHub. Okay, yeah, look up Lexicos. No, it would be user. User. 
colon lexicos. Right. And in his repository, um, go for repositories at the top. And there's one of them called WinRT, that, the second one. That. So this is for the Windows runtime environment, right? With this one, I think it's way easier to connect to the tone link object. Because what happens is the win the, the app is a .NET app. I think it is a C sharp object. And all the objects from the phone link are, you can access them with WinRT, but the problem for you would be that you would have to research a little bit how to do that. But, well, it would be the same for me because I don't know, you know, up, uh, from the top of my head how to do it. But when you look at the UIA object, I saw part of the structure that looks like a, like a WinRT object. And, you know, that's... If you want the most reliable way would be if possible, because we have to see if it is possible, it would be through the Windows RT, the runtime library. Um, but if not, then the second best would be, because you see you see here, Windows data, JSON, JSON object right there. That is a, an object that exists in Windows that you can connect to through the Windows runtime environment. And once you get that, you will get an object that is a JSON object. And now you can do the tri parse, you can do everything to string, to whatever you want. You see what I mean? Like that, it's very likely that the phone link has an object that you can access through windows.phone.link or something like that. And it would be a native auto hotkey object that then you can use the methods and everything it's kind of like wow. a com object, but yeah. it is a is the is the new way of the instead of com objects, it would be the Windows runtime objects. It's the same thing. So if that is possible, if they opened that object through the Windows runtime, which when I looked at the at the thing, it looked like it, then you would be able to go up a little bit. Look at the no, the second example, not too much. Go down below here. Look. Include Windows AHK. And because you included that, look, it, it looks like an object below. Look, windows.data.json.json object. You see, the one above is with the Windows runtime, but the one below is kind of like the Windows AHK already creates the window runtime for all the Windows things. So you can just use them as normal objects in AutoHotKey. It's really cool. It's just, and it is great for apps, not programs, you know, those new apps, maybe the, if they open that part of them to the Windows runtime, it's really amazing what we can do. It's really cool. And look at that, look, UI element, you see that? Yeah, that's what I think I saw in the UIA thing. So very interesting. Uh, it's a thing that you might want to spend, I don't know, half an hour to see if it is easy to do. If you can get something because if you can then this is the way to go i would not do anything else actually i i need the per correct name for the app. right that's what i said that's that's what i said like you would have to research a little bit but here the the in there think, you see the com server go go so go I to the right microsoft microsoft your phone. phone yeah exactly that's exactly this right is, this is the name i think very which, likely which i have to use Remind me of this. I think that actually changes on every computer. Is that yes, the code, the code itself on the right. But we yeah. can we can do a um, PowerShell command yeah. that gives me that number. But you yeah. see on the right, go go a little bit more to the right. No, nope. to the right, to the right, to the... yeah, your other. The... No, yeah, <laughs> go down. <laughs> you see where it says com server. So you see the link that you were saying. It said com server. There is a com object for it somewhere. I know that there is one. So that's the question. See if there's a way for you to find out what the COM object is or the runtime. If you do that, you don't have to mess with UIA because UIA in this case is really complicated just to get the first time. Once you get it, it's very stable, but it is a little bit annoying. This, right. this allow us to do so much more accurate, faster, better automations. Like I right. 
UIA. 100%. Yeah, totally. So I would definitely spend half an hour, see if you can connect with this. If you can, great. If you can't, then go with UIA. Well, and, and we still might, for the client, have one approach to get something done now. And then... Right, this, exactly. Because phone link is a really cool tool that like we you can automate, build. right? Yeah. So I hey, as we get the client something they can use today or tomorrow, but right. we we generate a almost a UIA whole approach with the phone link for a, um definitely to be able to automate. That'd be amazing. Cause sure. I still I need to check with Stephanie to see if they can today load push bullet. Because it was so weird yesterday, right? Yeah, but, that's so weird. Yeah. But, if it's not, if we can avoid phone link entirely, which I think conceivably, if this is if we can get a com object to automate phone link, we don't need. Yeah, that would be, that would be uh, yeah, exactly. We don't even need it. <laughs> Very That's cool. totally true. Right. Thank you, Zesh. You can jump over to Danny. Now. Yeah. All right. Cool. Mike.